Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Arctic, and today is all about money, money, money. So I hope you guys are ready. So getting started today, I think we should turn our money in for more money, basically. Uh, we can spend money to make money, and that's one of the things we can actually do. So what we need to do is kind of throw all of our money in our inventory and just kind of put this stuff to use and see what we can actually do. So like this, this change right here. I'm able to turn this into not cash, right? I don't think, okay, so this can actually be turned into cash, but it's it's done in a very weird way, um, right? So, oh no, here we can make $1 bills with 25 cents. Okay, so that's pretty easy to do, right? We just split the money in. Like that, we turn that into $1 bills. Um, 10 cents, that can, that probably hasn't, can't change, right? Probably need to add 10 with a nickel. That gives us 25 cents, okay. And then of course this can go, and that'll create a five cent. Okay, so that's about as far as we can go with converting our change over, because uh, our change doesn't really convert that well. Let's do that into five, there we go. Okay, so change, even though I would never, never recommend putting change in your wallet, at least we have a lot less change in our wallet now. Uh, but we need to convert, these things over so these can convert into hundred dollar bills and also these 20s can convert into hundred dollar bills like that awesome and our tens can be converted into 20s what else do we have in here uh these these can be turned into five dollar bills i do believe maybe not like this five dollar bill uh or more 20s here Let's just convert those into hundreds. There we go. So we have $1,500. Also over here, we have a bunch of ones. I think we can turn these into fives. Like that. I'm going to split this down the middle. And we have four $1 bills left over. These fives, of course, we got to convert those into tens. And convert those into twenties. And then convert the twenties into hundreds. There we go. 1700 so I think that's about as uh, compact as we can get our cash, which is perfect. Um, and we're going to need to invest that money. So right here inside the extra quest that can be turned in multiple times for more money, we need to actually accept this main quest. This is going to require 10 $100 bills, so $1,000. We're going to need a loot chest for it, and then we're going to have the ability to turn these quests in. And I think that's well worth it. Let's do that. And then we'll grab our loot crate, right? Hopefully we get something good out of that. Bummer. That's really not anything that great. Just a little bit of EMC, basically. So let's take the rest of our money, our $700 here, store that away. And let's start producing something that's going to generate a little bit for us. Now, I kind of want to try automating a few of these different ways of generating money. Um, so once we get to it, I want to just try and do this. But one of the things I want to start with is enzymes. This is probably the easiest one to do. And we're going to start off with this. So enzyme production, you can probably produce tons of enzymes fairly quickly and you get $25 a pop, which add up because four times that's a hundred dollars. Um, I mean, and you need a little bit to buy some of these items. So if you want to buy a quantum battery, you only need 1500 to do that. So turn it in a few times, you get them. Right here, I mean, just a few times, you can get yourself eight dragon's breath. I mean, that's a pretty good deal in itself. 5,000 to get a sponge if you want to do Thomcraft, just wipe away any of your mistakes. Bam, you can do that as well. Um, you want to get a creative um, power. <laughs> you can just get creative power. Look at this. It doesn't take that much. 10,000 and uh, a creative mana pool, which you can actually use the everlasting gluttony pool to automate um, this which the Starfield generator gives you 50, which will double your enzymes. So if you could get to this, I mean, you could pretty much make even more money. And then eventually you get to the 20,000, which is the Tome of Knowledge, which this is insane because the Tome of Knowledge, yeah, that unlocks everything in your EMC tablet, basically putting you in somewhat of creative mode if you have enough EMC. So um, all of this is really nice. Like uh, you can buy a, a creative wireless uh, crafting terminal, which I... I don't know. Is that something you can only get there? I think it might be. Can you craft this? Oh my. Oh, it's a creative. But you can make the regular wireless crafting terminal. I was about to say, 
this is the creative one. So unlimited power uh, will always link to your system. Pretty cool. Also, you have unlimited creative modifiers, so you can make some cr incredibly overpowered tools if you wanted to. And if you don't want to fight the Chaos Guardian, $100 gets you these tiny Chaos Fragments, which, I mean, that's not very much, but, I mean, you do get quite a bit for turning in this uh, Draconic Reactor Core. I mean, you get $300. Don't get me wrong. That's quite a bit. Um, so, let's go ahead and get started. We now have that. I want to start making enzymes. And this is not that hard to make. It's a little bit, it's, it's Bonnie's genetics, but it uses forestry to get started. And uh, I need to kind of get a little bit into forestry in order to make some of these things, which I don't have a problem with at all. I actually really, really like some of this stuff. So let's get into forestry. So we're going to need these enhanced circuit boards. To do that, we're going to need a carpenter. To do that, we're going to need bronze. All right, so let's actually just, let's get some bronze. And I'm going to throw some bronze here to get a couple of sturdy cases. Go back through this all together. And voila, we have a carpenter. So, point. Let's go ahead and grab that. We'll use this to power our carpenter for right now. And to get, the, uh, get everything started, we're going to need just to fill it with some water. And that's a pretty easy circuit there. We need bronze and redstone. So, redstone. And bronze. That should be enough to get us at least the two that we need. We need some bronze gears. We're also going to need this right here, which is another sturdy casing, which we just made. But that's basically all you need is the incubator. You need the incubator to be able... You actually need two incubators, I do believe. Um, as you can see, these don't support EMC. But what does support EMC is this. And then I think the parts used to make this... Well, except for the circuit boards... Don't use EMC, but bronze definitely does. Which I'm going to grab just a bit more. So, let's go over here. This is where I'm going to set up automation for this. And I kind of just want to get this thing placed in here. Just to get it to do what, what I need it to do. Let's grab some water. And we'll make sure this is powered on our network. There we go. That should have some power. We'll set up the recipe. Make sure the items are actually inside as well. I just completely messed up the whole recipe. That's completely wrong, right? This goes in the center and then redstone on the outsides. Or am I doing this all wrong? What am I doing? Pretty sure it's on the outside. <laughs> I'm already forgetting what, how to make this. Oh, it's on the inside. Yeah, that should work. Bronze on the inside. Redstone on the outside. And then add water. And there it goes. Okay. So I just need to add the water to get this thing up and running. Let's just add some water. And that should start producing the circuits for us. So there's one. We're waiting on just a few more. Technically, we're going to need two. So I have one now. That's two. That makes our first setup. But we're going to need more. And we just have to kind of wait. Um, actually, we could probably use our... Acceleration wand, which I don't even know where that went, to be honest. Is it EMC? No, it's in here. No, maybe it's not. I have no clue where the acceleration wand went. It was in my inventory. Now it's gone. It doesn't really matter. We don't need that much of it anyways. Okay, so it's done. We have a bunch of those. Let's take that on over here. And we'll produce... We'll make a couple of these. We need to make another sturdy casing... Because we're going to need two of these reinforced casings. And I think we have bronze gears just in case. I'm going to make a couple. But I think we, I think we have enough. I, I think we have everything we need for this. We just need our circuit boards. There is one incubator. And this is another incubator. Perfect. So we have two. That's exactly what we need to get started. And let's sort of place these things down and, and kind of see what we need to do here. Awesome. So we'll place one here and one here. They do require a little bit of power, I do believe. So we can give them both power for this. That's no big deal. 
Okay, so these are being powered. Um, and now on the inside, they do need a few things. Now on this input tank, I, I don't know if we're gonna need this, but I'm gonna show you. So right here, we need to produce bacteria because it's gonna require bacteria, some sugar, and since the loss is 50%, and we're gonna put this in here. So I guess a stack of, of sugar will only get us 32 enzymes. At least that's what I'm thinking, if it, it's saying item loss at 50%. So that doesn't matter to me. What I'm worried about is bacteria. Because it looks like we can produce bacteria with growth medium, which has an EMC value and an item loss of 5%, whereas this is a really high item loss and requires growth medium, which is another step all on its own, which still requires growth medium, but it looks like you get a bunch more. Uh, but you don't get that much more out of this. It's just if we can make unlimited growth medium, this is probably the better option here. And this says it doesn't require any bacteria. So we should just be able to make growth medium right away, which just requires bone meal and sugar. And that should get us on our way, right? So bone meal and sugar together will get us growth medium. And then that in itself can be saved. And then we can just pull some out, right? That should be pretty simple in theory. Let's see how well it does in practice. Okay, so I don't see anything building up in here. It doesn't look like we have anything. It does show it supports this, but this actually has a tank. This should be inputting. Owner is me. Info, help. Hold down tab to hover over the mouse controls. The incubator combines liquids and items that allows it to sit an ideal temperature to encourage bacterial growth. No recipe, no valid recipe found. So maybe I need more growth medium. Do I need to, do I need to fill this whole thing? Okay, so maybe not. So that's, this is the, the little part that is going to take a little bit of time. Because right here it shows there's some, but it, it shows over here we do need bacteria, but we don't need any of it which kind of makes you go, how am I supposed to do that? Right? How am I supposed to have a little bit of bacteria? But apparently it's a thing and we do need a little bit of bacteria in it. So that being said, what we probably need to do then is to first start off with making growth medium, which is water and our growth medium, which will get us that. So maybe I do need water, right? clear that out and maybe we do need that and I can just add that in like so that's going to give us a little bit of, of growth medium here and it's just going to start producing let's get a fluid pipe we'll route this into the back just to kind of get this thing started extract and that should insert automatically and that'll start filling up with growth medium. Now we need wheat in order to get bacteria in this one. So this should start producing bacteria. Okay. So if I break this, hopefully it'll remove the amount that's in here and that should be able to cycle itself. And it just spit the growth medium back over here for some reason. Okay. So this guy Capacity is empty. What I want to do is take another fluid pipe. And I want to see how this actually works. Fluid conduit. Let's go backwards with this. Let's set this to extract. And then this to insert. Always active. That should fill up with bacteria. Right, that should be good. This is now empty. Now, whenever we put growth medium in here, that shouldn't use anything to produce more bacteria. No, it doesn't. So we should be able to pull back, put this back on extract, always active. Insert there. And that should be pulling the bacteria over here. And guys, we're ready to go. 
All we need now is to have a chest. So we need a energy condenser to pump two things in. We're going to need two energy condensers. One energy condenser here, one here. Right? And inside these energy condensers, we're probably going to just have roosts going to them. I don't even... I think emerald chickens is probably way overkill for what we're about to do, but... that It's not going to take too much to get emerald chickens, to be honest. Um, we already have... I'll just split two sets of eight emerald chickens, and that should be plenty. And we'll just automate two roosts. One roost going here. And we can even use flat transfer nodes. Do I have flat? I do I have flat transfer nodes. Just get some flat transfer nodes. And what I'm going to do is I'll place the roost one on top of this, one on top of this. Flat transfer node. Go there and there. Wrong. Don't want it there. Needs to go in between here. And if you hold this, you can see that this should take our chickens and it should input it into here, I think, if I've set this up correctly. Um, I don't think there, I, I forget what command it is to reverse these. But I don't know if you shift right click, you can. Oh, it took my chickens out, didn't it? Should be able to pull that back out. Maybe not. Maybe I need to actually... Alright, so it's not actually pulling out. I need to go one block below. One block below. It's understandable. Alright, to take these off, you just hold shift and punch them, even while they're underneath a block. Should make it super easy to do that. And I can just click it that way. That should be... Yeah, now it's transferring them over. Perfect. So there we go. We figured out the solution to the problem. Now we should be ready to rock and roll. All right. So in each one of these, we need to make sure that my chickens are in there for one thing. We need to make sure that these are actually producing the items that we want to produce. This one I want producing growth medium. Let me click that out of there. There we go. Growth medium. So whenever this emerald chicken produces, which it should do fairly soon, these shouldn't take too long to produce. Do see the are in the negatives, which doesn't exactly mean they're not working. It, yeah, now it's going. There it goes. Produced it. Now it's producing growth medium. Then we can actually use some transfer nodes. Or item, not item, transfer nodes. Item conduits. I mean, we could probably use transfer nodes, but it doesn't really matter to me. I'm just going to place some conduits down. Same over here. And extract always active. Insert. How's our bacteria doing? Doing pretty good. How is our bacteria doing over here? Doing really good. All right. And then over here, let's get some dark glass to fill in our hole and sugar. And this should be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So that should be converted into sugar. This will be set to always active, extract, insert, and that should be filling with sugar. And we should be seeing enzymes pull up over here. And there we go. That's $25. That's here at four. That's $100. And it's literally that simple. This is a, a full automation setup. And what I can do is take this last flat transfer node and I can go. All right, I need to, to move my items over into a chest or some kind of storage. Um, let's see. Quantum storage. And if you remember, we wanted this item to go into here. So we had to place it on the actual block we wanted to transfer to or transfer from. So if I want this to be transferred, I want the uh, incubator to transfer here. I need to put it on the incubator side. And that, maybe I have to actually break this first, then place this, like that. And then I can place this, and then that should end up with enzymes in it. And guys, that's pretty simple. 
<laughs> I love how actually with the transparency you can see the you can see that that's there on the inside. That is so cool. How the flat those flat transfer nodes are really nice for making automation really small. But guys, that is a fully automated setup for enzymes. You can of course speed this up if you want by making more. But this should be as fast as it can go. Um, and yeah, that's not bad. Let's get some more of our lovely cake that literally is so crazily overpowered. Uh, we don't even need to eat very often. Oh, also, I meant to get my uh, dark glass back in place. And voila. That's set up. Honestly, we can put flat transfer nodes on this and make it even more compact if we wanted to. But I don't feel like that's going to be even necessary, as you can see. This is just insane. 35 enzymes. Let's go ahead and turn that in for some money. You can see the process. I don't think you can like keep clicking. Like You have to actually claim your rewards first. Then claim it. Then claim your rewards. Claim. Claim your rewards. It's literally that bad. I mean, I wish you can claim it multiple times, but I have heard people using like auto clickers. And you can set up programmable auto clickers to go here. Here, 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 here. And repeat this process over and over again. That is something that you can't do. And I have seen those work out fairly well. But yeah, this is how you have to do this. This is why I say this is probably not the best method for generating money, simply because of um, how ridiculous this part is of claiming it. But it is the easiest to automate. Very, very easy to automate money this way. And I mean, we've already gathered probably a couple hundred dollars, which is perfect for me. Um, so very soon we're going to be setting up a rainbow generator. I had somebody say, why set up a rainbow generator whenever you can have unlimited power with a, with 15k? I don't want to make the rainbow generator for money. Like, the ra I don't care about money. I don't care about this system. The rainbow generator, I have a quest over here that I actually really want to make, is the rainbow stone. This is only $100, but we can automate the rainbow generator. I think it looks really cool. So I want something that looks cool. And I also want to set up full of automation for it. So we're actually out of enzymes here. Look at that. Look at all the money we got. Like, a bunch of cash. We also have some more $5 bills over here, which all those can get converted into more 20s. And then the 20s get converted into $800. So like that, we gathered $800. That was that quick. Um, just from that process we did. So, yeah, it doesn't take too long to do this. I mean, it doesn't take too long at all. And this is like full enzyme collection. And then we have enzymes right there. So we just let those build up and we're good to go. That's about it. We should never have to worry about this because this should never use bacteria. You just have to get bacteria in here in the first place. And yeah, just let it rip. Man, that was really easy. Really, really easy. So I actually took this now and I compacted it down to the size that I said I wanted it to compact it down to. And I had to re-break these and just let them do the process over again, which wasn't didn't take very long at all. And uh, yeah, now this is even more compact and it's producing so much. Um, just the amount of enzymes here, just like uh, just this small amount produces well over three thousand um, dollars. And now I have like five thousand dollars. Just look at all this, these hundreds. It's just kind of ridiculous. And I was going through trying to figure out what would be another option that we could probably do in today's video. And the liquid experience is probably going to be the best one, but I kind of want to see how much this actually takes to get a reinforced large drum. And from that, how much it actually takes to fill up and how much will this experience, how much will my experience levels take a hit by doing so? Because that's a large amount of experience I have stored very, very large. And, um, we can probably take a look at, let's see, drum, right? And we need a reinforced drum, I do believe. Reinforced large drum. So we have a regular drum, which I know I have stored in my tablet. And then we're going to take this and do something special with it, right? Yeah, we're going to add some gold. I just want to get this EMC if I'm going to use it. We're going to need gold and that gets us and some diamonds and that gets us a reinforced drum. Now this thing holds quite a bit of fluid and I want to see what it takes to fill this thing. So to fill it, I can place it on the side and I can tell this, okay, I want to export to this. 
and it shouldn't take too long to fill this thing. But I do want to watch my levels. As you can see, this is filling. Look at that. It's filling. It's already at it says eight buckets or whatever. And you look here, and you don't even see this really moving. Like, as this moves, this is filling it back up, and it's just keeping this thing full. The only thing that probably would be an issue is just how fast this thing can go. It's not that fast, and we're going to need 4,000 buckets worth in here, which actually doesn't seem like too much. Um, too much experience, because like this is keeping up easy. And the amount of money you actually get from this is quite a bit. Something I wanted to, to look at, though, is uh, does this output a comparator signal? Because that would be something that I could probably use. Um, some way to like push this, maybe with a piston. Um, if we could push this with a piston, maybe set it out front and run a comparator signal, will this actually let us know how much is in this place? So let's get some, uh, let's see, gray. We can just make some more of this, light gray concrete. And I just want to see, does this output a comparator signal? So if I place a comparator here, you can see it does output a signal, right? It does receive that, it does know that there's stuff in here, but does it have a like amount? Is it based off percentage or what's this thing doing? You know, that's what I want to see. So redstone and let's see. Oh yes. So basically what this is saying is, all right, we're not very full, right? So it's emitting a very low redstone signal based on this, this drum. So I'm assuming that once it gets to the next notch, that this thing will be ready to rock and roll. Like this thing will upgrade and go to the, the next redstone signal, right? So that's what I'm hoping. It should be divisible by what, 15, I think? Uh, redstone goes out 15 ticks or 15 blocks. So that's what that should do. And hopefully that, that's the case, because then what we can do is have a chain. Since we don't have any block placers or anything like that, I think we'll actually do have block placers, do we? don't we? Uh, do, we have a block placer and breaker. Auto breaker. So technically what we can do is we can tell our auto breaker and auto placer to run off of redstone. And whenever it hits a certain redstone limit, which we can use, uh, what can we use? We can use actually additions, not actually additions. We can use RF tools and RF tools should allow us to do that. I think that would work perfectly. Um, yeah, that would, that would be bad at all. Totally. I, I want to see though, like this is filling up so slow, right? And we already have 164 buckets in there. We need 4,000. And this just exports it so slow. It's kind of ridiculous at how slow that is pulling from there. I almost wonder if us piping it in directly would be faster. Right? Because that's, that is ridiculously slow. Like maybe multiple sides work. Um, fluid pipes. Let's try this. Maybe I'll, I'll, uh, break this for now. Actually, let's put it on the top. Wait, where'd I place that? <laughs> place it in the wrong spot. All right, let's place this on top. Like that. We'll place this here. This here. And we'll see if we can't pull faster from all the sides. Maybe that's a thing. Push. Push. Push, push. So all these sides are going to push. These all need to set to extract. We should be able to pipe some experience out of here real fast, hopefully. And back here. Did I accidentally misclick the bottom? No, it should be pulling. It's just I'm I'm picking up the experience. All right, we'll set that there. And then I'll route this up to the top. Make sure these are all on, right? Always active. Always active. Always active. Extract up top here. Did not mean to place that. 
<laughs> the dumb things I do, I accidentally misclick. And extract. And then we'll place that here. Misclicked again. And we'll set this to insert. Is that going any faster? Yes, it's going way faster. Okay, and we're actually seeing our levels drop a little bit. But as you can see, this is going way faster. And look at this, we're now at two. So this is now filled a little bit more. And this is now outputting a redstone signal. Oh yeah, we can totally automate this. There's no doubt about the ability to automate this with a breaker, auto placer and breaker. I think we're gonna do that next episode. We are getting pretty, pretty, pretty close at the end of today's video, but I do know we can do this. So this is actually very important. Using a comparator to read uh, block states is very, very important. And I'm so glad that this is actually a part of it. So I'll definitely be able to use this in the future um, because we can set up like a hot swap system that will automatically pull the reinforced drum that we have sitting here out, break it, pull it out, and then place in a new one with a placer that's maybe on the other side. Because I think I have this out front here and that would totally work. Totally work. It is consuming our levels, but very, very slow. I want to see, is this thing, like this thing is super filling up now. It's already almost at half. And look at that. It's outputting a redstone signal. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it is now at just about half. So I'm sure once it hits half, it'll go one more. And yeah, that's really nice. So that means whenever our level reaches 15 or more, I think it's 15, we can set it up to, to work, right? So we can set this up to auto break once it hit that certain threshold. I think this is gonna be awesome. This is gonna work perfect. So full signal strength, we can set it to actually do that. Um, we can set it, it, it to the block to actually to set off, actually require full, full block state, which would work really good. So we'll have to figure that out next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video a thumbs up, guys. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome as always. Thanks for watching.